Hey guys and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory we're going to be talking about the relationship between speed and altitude. First off, let's talk about various types of speeds. So we have EAS, CAS, EAS, TAS and Mach number. I'm sure you've all seen them written down. The ICET stands for Indicated, Calibrated, Equivalent and True. A quick bonus point for this lesson here, on some ATPL questions you might get things like how do we calculate the difference between equivalent and calculated airspeed? Well, this is the way I remember. I remember the rule iced tea, as in the lovely drink that we all enjoy. And remember the initials. So I, C, E, T. I stands for instrument, also position. C, compressibility. E, environment, which is essentially density. So these are the errors we correct to progress to the next stage. So if you have your indicated airspeed and we want to calculate our calibrated airspeed, we have to correct for instrument and position error. The next set of syllables to remember is Echo, Charlie, Tango, Mike. Now there's loads of questions in the ATPL bank about this. They're super simple as long as you understand this. So Echo, Charlie, Tango, Mike stands for equivalent calibrated TAS and Mach number. Now the reason this is important to know is because as we climb in altitude, the relationship between the speeds changes. The examples I've given here, as you can see, we have a speed along the bottom here and an altitude axis along the top here, and that would be zero. So first of all, let's imagine we are climbing at a constant TAS. So the vertical line is always going to be our constant. In this next example, it's the Mach line that's the constant. In this case, we are climbing. As you can see, our altitude is increasing, but our TAS is constant. So what happens here? Well, if you remember Echo, Charlie, Tango, Mike, they're always in that order from left to right and the lines always diverge away from each other. So whichever line you draw as a constant, the lines to the right or to the left will always go away from each other. So in this case, Mac is on the right, CAS and EAS are on the left, so they're diverging away. So as we increase our altitude at constant TAS, our Mac number, as you can see, is actually increasing in speed along the bottom of the tape here. However, our CAS and EAS are actually decreasing. Now, quick extra note here, I've always just considered CAS and ES for these examples to be indicated airspeed because some you see some questions out there that ask you about indicated airspeed. So if they're talking about indicated, just assume CAS and ES are one figure and you can just draw one line and you know TAS and MAC are always to the right. On my second example here, I've drawn a constant MAC number. So in this case, we are climbing at constant MAC number. And what's happening to all the speeds? Our TAS is decreasing, our CAS is decreasing and our ES is also decreasing. Now, why is this important? Let's say, especially, we are climbing, climbing out, and we do a very high climb, you know, up to flight level 300, for example, and we're climbing at a constant indicated airspeed. So at some point, we are climbing at a constant indicated airspeed, our Mach number is increasing. Because our Mach number is increasing, at some point we are going to encounter Mach buffet. So there's a switchover point, especially in commercial jets, at which we switch, and now we climb at a constant Mach number to avoid getting into trouble with high Mach numbers. So after a certain altitude, we'll continue our climb at a constant Mach number. Now, what's the danger here? If we continue to climb, eventually we will reach our stall speed because our indicated airspeed is going to be dropping. So you can see why this is important. Now, these graphs, Echo, Charlie, Tango, Mike, they work for both climbing and descending. So if we go back to the same examples, if we are descending at a constant TAS, our Mach number is decreasing, but our indicated, calibrated and equivalent are increasing. And the same with the Mach number. If we decrease at a constant Mach number, you can see our TAS there is increasing. So the dangers of that are if we are decreasing at a constant Mach number, we may enter into a high speed stall situation from our TAS increasing. Now, I've only seen this a couple of times, but there are some ATPL questions that refer to the exact same questions, but below sea level. All you need to remember is below sea level, it's exactly the opposite to this. So the lines are essentially on the other side. So if we're increasing our altitude below sea level, our TAS will actually be increasing, not decreasing. So just calculate, do your calculations and switch them. If you'd like to see more videos, please like, share and subscribe. All the best and until next time.